primary 4 second term english language unit 9 rainbow poems objectives of the lesson at the end of this lesson students will be able to appreciate a poem learn how to use the dictionary Use apostrophe to form contractions. Identify the words with silent letters. Appreciate the rhyme, rhythm and style of a poem. Turn page number 70 in your textbook. Unit 9 Rainbow Poems There are many different poems about the same subject. Here are two poems about rainbows. Okay children, here you are given a poem about the rainbow. Let's read it. The Rainbow the rainbows like a colored bridge that sometimes shines from ridge to ridge. Today one end is in the sea, the others in the field with me. Ian Christian Smith Let's look at the first line of the poem. The rainbows like a colored bridge. Here, the poet compares the rainbow to a colorful bridge. You all know how many colors are there in the rainbow? Yes, there are seven colors. What are those colors? They are red orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. So even in the picture you can see this colorful rainbow looks like a colored bridge. Let's look at the second line of the poem that sometimes shines from ridge to ridge. As the poet says, the rainbow is shining from a long narrow hilltop to another hilltop. Last two lines of the poem, Today one end is in the sea, the others in the field with me. So today the poet can see one end of this rainbow is at the sea and the other end of this rainbow is in the field with the poet. Okay, at the end of this poem you can see they have mentioned the name of the writer. The poet is Ian Crichton Smith. Let's see what do you mean by these words. You can use a dictionary to help you. First word, rainbows. Here, rainbows means Rainbow is. Second word, rich. Do you know what is the meaning of rich? Yes, it means hilltop. The last word, others. What does it mean? It means other is. Let's do 
comprehension part a discuss the answers to these questions first question what is the rainbow like the rainbow is like a colored bridge second question where is one end of the rainbow one end of the rainbow is in the sea third question where is the other end of the rainbow the other end of the rainbow is in the field with the poet now turn page number 71 in your textbook here you are given another poem about the rainbow Let's read it. My rainbow garden. I have a rainbow garden. For inside of it you will see every color you would find what a rainbow ought to be. Here the poet says she has a very colorful garden. actually it looks like a rainbow garden if you go inside that garden you will see each and every color and also you will be able to find what a rainbow looks like inside the poet's garden that is why because this garden is that much colorful let's read the second stanza of this poem the blue is for forget me nots yellow for daffodils red is for my gladiolas my flowers are such a thrill Do you know what are forget me nots? Yes, it is a plant with bright blue flowers. Daffodils are a kind of bright yellow flowers. Gladiolus is so a tall flowering plant which come in red and many other colors. So in the poet's garden forgets me nots give the blue color of the rainbow daffodils give the yellow color of the rainbow and gladiolus give the red color of the rainbow you can see those flowers in the picture too so when you look at all these colorful flowers they make you excited let's move on to the third stanza of this poem green creates the many leaves of my rainbow garden too i get such peacefulness i would love to show it to you as the poet says Many trees and their leaves are in green color in the poet's colorful garden. So the poet feels peaceful when she is there in her garden. And she likes to show us that peacefulness too. Let's read the next stanza. My roses. Oh, I have many my palette of color shades I must enjoy them daily for the time for them will fade As the poet says she is having many roses in a range of colors These roses of different colors beautify the poet's garden a lot 
So the poet is there every day in her garden to see their beauty and to enjoy it. But when the time comes, all these flowers will die away. Now we have come to the last stanza of the poem. So, if you are feeling weary and you don't know what to do, plant flowers of all colors and have a rainbow garden too. So, if you feel tired and you don't know what to do, then the poet is asking you to plant flowers from different colors. Then you too will be able to have a rainbow garden which is very colorful. You can see at the end of this poem too, they have mentioned the name of the writer of the poem, My Rainbow Garden. The poet is Marilyn Lott. Let's see what do you mean by these words. You can use a dictionary to help you. First word, thrill. Here, thrill means excitement. Second word, shades. Do you know the meaning of shades? Yes, it means colors. Third word, daily. Daily means every day. Next word, fate. What does it mean? It means die away. Last word, weary. Yes, you can say what is the meaning of weary. It means tired. Let's do comprehension. Part A. Discuss the answers to these questions. Question number 1. What does the poet plant for the blue of the rainbow? Yes, the poet plants forget-me-nots for the blue of the rainbow. Next question. What does the poet plant for the red of the rainbow? The poet plants gladiolas for the red of the rainbow. Next question. What does the poet plant for the yellow of the rainbow? The poet plants daffodils for the yellow of the rainbow. Second question. Which flowers does the poet say have many different shades? As the poet says, roses have many different shades. Third question. If you are feeling weary, what does the poet want you to do? The poet wants us to plant flowers of all colors if we are feeling weary. Vocabulary Using a dictionary There is often a choice of words to use in your writing. Use a dictionary to check the exact definitions of words with similar meanings. Remember, synonyms are words that have the same or almost the same meaning. The exact meaning can be slightly different. For example, red and scarlet are synonyms but with a slightly different meaning. Red is a color that includes many different shades. 
Scarlet is a bright shade of red. But both red and scarlet are similar words. Another example, field and widow are synonyms with a slightly different meanings. A field is an area of open ground planted with crops or grass. But a meadow is a field of long grass and wild flowers. But both field and meadow, they have similar meaning. So, they are considered as synonyms. Part A. Copy each sentence and choose the best word to fit the gap. As an example, first one is done for you. My friend and I communicated, chatted, whispered on the telephone for an hour. Here, you have to select the most suitable verb and rewrite the sentence. So the answer is, my friend and I communicated on the telephone for an hour. Part B. Write your own definition of each noun below without using a dictionary. Here, you don't have to write a complete sentence. As an example... Look at the first word. It's bridge. Do you know what is a bridge? Yes, it is a path across a river or a road. Now turn page number 36 in your workbook. Here you are given two activities. Part A. Write a definition for each of these words. Keep your definitions short. Part B. Now use a dictionary or thesaurus to find a synonym for each of the words. Okay children, now it's time for you to answer these exercises in your workbook itself. Punctuation apostrophes of contraction. Remember, apostrophes are used in contractions in place of letters that have been left out. Yes, apostrophes are used with the words to make them short. But there's no any change in the meaning. Look at these two examples. First example, the rainbows like a colored bridge. Here, the apostrophe shows that the letter I has been left out. So, rainbows mean rainbow is. Let's go to the second example. For inside of it, you will see the apostrophe shows that the letters WI have been left out. So, you will means you will. Part A. Rewrite these pairs of words using an apostrophe. As an example, first word was not. How you can write it using an apostrophe? W A S N apostrophe T. The answer is wasn't. Let's look at the second word. There is. Tell me how to write it. 
T H E R E apostrophe S. The answer is theirs. Let's move on to part B. Use three of the contractions you have made in activity A in sentences of your own. It's time for you to make your own sentences. Let's take the first word. It is wasn't. Now you have to construct a sentence using wasn't. You can say that game wasn't so bad. Turn page number 36 in your workbook. Here you are given two activities. Part A. Change the underlined words in each sentence to a contraction. Part B. Use these contractions in sentences of your own. So children, now you can answer these exercises in your workbook itself. Spelling Silent letters Silent letters can make words tricky to spell. For example, I am fascinated by rainbows. Here, when we pronounce the word fascinated, C sound is not there. That means letter C is silent. However, there are some rules you can learn to help you. The letters next to silent letters can often give you a clue. Let's discuss those rules. First one, the silent C usually follows the letter S. As examples, seen, science. When you look at these two words, you can see silent C is there after letter S. Second rule, a silent H often follows the letters C O R. As examples, choir and rhyme. When you look at these two words, you can see silent H is there after letters C O R. Last rule, a silent O sometimes comes before the letter U. Examples, double and touch. When you look at these two words, you can see silent O is there before letter U. Part A. Copy the words and underline the silent letter in each word. As an example, first word, cousin. Now you can tell what is the silent letter here in this word, cousin. Yes, it is letter O. Letter O is silent here. Let's move on to part B. For each group of words, write a sentence describing what you notice about the letter that comes before or after the silent letter. Look at these three words. Scenery, scissors, scent. You can see letter S has come before the silent C in each and every word given here. So the answer is letter S comes before the silent letter C. Part C. Each of these words 
has a missing silent letter rewrite the words correctly example first word it's muscle look at this word carefully what silent letter is missing here yes it's letter c letter c is missing there so the answer is m u s c l e muscle the missing silent letter is letter c now turn page number 37 in your workbook here you are given three activities let's read part a underline the silent letter in each of these words part b underline the word in each sentence that has a silent letter let's do part c in page number 37 of your workbook rewrite these words correctly here you are given eight words you need to rewrite them correctly so children now you can answer these exercises in your workbook itself grammar possessive adjectives and possessive pronouns okay children tell me do you know what is an adjective it is a word which describes a noun then what is a pronoun pronoun is a word stands in place of a noun so let's learn what are possessive adjectives and what are possessive pronouns possessive adjectives describe nouns for example my flowers are such a thrill here in this sentence can you identify what is the possessive adjective yes it is my my is the possessive adjective here here you are given some other possessive adjectives let's read them my your his her its our you were there let's go to possessive pronouns possessive pronouns stand in the place of a possessive adjective plus a noun for example these flowers are mine here in this sentence can you identify what is the possessive pronoun yes it is mine possessive pronoun is mine next you are given some other possessive pronouns let's read them mine yours his hers ours yours theirs part a copy the sentences and underline the possessive adjectives first one is done for you read that sentence your roses have a stronger scent than the daffodils can you identify what is the possessive adjective here yes it is your the answer is your let's go to the second question copy the sentences and underline the possessive pronoun first example that field is ours i am sure now you can identify the possessive pronoun of this sentence 
What is it? It is ours. The answer is ours. Let's do part B. Copy and complete each sentence with a possessive pronoun. First sentence This is my flower. Now tell me how to write this sentence with a possessive pronoun. In this sentence, they have used the possessive adjective that is my. Now you need to make another sentence using a possessive pronoun. Yes, you can say this flower is mine. The answer is this flower is mine. Let's do part C. Use these possessive pronouns in sentences of your own. Yes, it's time for you to make your own sentences. The first word, ours. Now construct a sentence. Yes, you can say this little boy is ours. Now turn page number 38 in your workbook. Here you are given three activities to do. Part A. Underline the possessive adjectives in each sentence. Part B. Rewrite the sentences using a possessive pronoun instead of the underlined words in each sentence. Let's go to part C. Use each pair of possessive pronouns in a sentence of your own. So children, now you can answer these exercises in your workbook itself. Writing Poetry The rainbow on page 70 is a poem with one verse. That means it has only one stanza. It has a rhyme scheme too. Lines 1 and 2 rhyme. Lines 3 and 4 of that poem also rhyme. When we talk about the next poem, My Rainbow Garden on page 71, it is a poem with five verses. That means it has five stanzas. It also has a rhyme scheme. Lines 2 and 4 of that poem rhyme in each verse. Did you notice that? In each and every stanza, lines 2 and 4 rhyme. A poem that rhymes must also make sense. The poet thinks of rhyming words and picks the ones that make the best sense. Let's read the example given. The rainbow's like a colored bridge that sometimes shines from ridge to ridge. Here, bridge and ridge they rhyme. Next lines. Today one end is in the sea, the others in the field with me. Can you see the words sea and me rhyme? And there are some other words which rhyme with these two words. They are be free. Turn page number 77 in your textbook. Here you are given three activities. First question, make lists of words that could complete each pair of rhyming lines. Second question, read the words in the box, sort the rhyming words into two lists. Third question, 
use of your lists of rhyming words to write a four line poem of your own lines 2 and 4 should rhyme let's turn page number 39 in your workbook here you are given one activity i'm reading choose from the box the best rhyming words to finish each rhyme the second question is complete these verses with rhyming words of your own here you are given a poem but some verses are not completed you need to use rhyming words of your own and complete these given verses my dear children now we have come to the end of our lesson so hope you all understood the lesson